Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, which is taking forecasting from Excel and bringing it into Hyperion planning. Okay, so just quickly, we'll run through the agenda for today. So firstly, we'll just have a quick uh, we'll look at forecasting in Excel and the issues associated with this. We'll then take a quick look at what is Hyperion planning before moving on to how we can improve our forecasting processes by using Hyperion planning. We then look at the different reporting options that are available before moving on to a demo, and then finally we'll have a Q&A session. Okay, so forecasting in Excel and what are its issues? Well, Excel is used aggressively in most organizations and particularly within the finance department. So many finance departments still use Excel for their budgeting and forecasting process. And whilst it is a flexible and easy to use tool, its lack of structure, consistency, and data control causes countless headaches for the finance departments on a daily basis. So for example, let's take a look at the following role Excel plays in the daily lives of John, our regional manager, Jane, our fp and manager, and Joe, our CFO. So John is the regional manager in a large organization. And the fp and team have just sent John a forecast template in Excel and asked him to provide the forecast for his region. So John begins to work on the template, only to realize that a number of expense accounts are missing from the template. Therefore, the template does not meet uh, John's requirements. So John goes, he adds these accounts, and he continues looking at the data that he needs to populate. In order to provide an accurate forecast, John needs to calculate the totals based on a number of key assumptions. He cannot make these assumptions within the template that has been provided to him, and therefore he must create and populate an offline spreadsheet using some of these key assumptions as the drivers. Once he then has calculated this data, he then goes back and he inputs the data into the template provided. All the data is now in Excel but the total expenses do not roll up incorrectly. After an hour or so of reconciling the data, John remembers that the additional expenses he added into the uh, template have not been added into the formulas for the totals, so therefore he has to go and update the formulas on the spreadsheets in order to uh, get the totals correct. This is just some of the problems that John would face when forecasting in Excel. So we then move on to Jane, and Jane is the fp and a manager in the same organization, and she reports in to the CFO, Joe, who has to present the board and the forecast to the board tomorrow. So Jane is struggling to get the final figures together. Each of the regional managers has sent Jane their spreadsheets, however, each of them has slightly been adapted to cater for their own needs. Jane is struggling with her cell-based formulas, and each time she adds additional regions, to another formula is thrown out of sync due to the additional lines being added to the templates by the regional managers. So by the time Jane has consolidated the regional forecast, she is down to the wire, and she has little or no time for analysis, and she just has to send the final figures on to Joe, the CFO. Okay, so then Joe, the CFO, he receives the final forecast from Jane, the evening before he needs to present it to the board. Joe's FP and A team have been tied up consolidating the regional forecast and he has not had the resources to carry out what, any what-if analysis scenarios. So he's just going to have to do it out and present the figures he has to the board. So it's the day of the presentation and the board have a number of questions based on the forecast presented. Joe struggles to answer some of their questions as he does not have visibility of the underlying assumptions that were made by John, the regional manager, and managers uh, in similar positions to John. So he cannot determine how the forecast totals were arrived at. So Joe has to park these questions and commit to providing more detail at a later date. So as you can see, so at different levels of the organization, you can see different issues by using Excel through the forecasting process. Okay, so then if we look at Hyperion planning and how this can help uh, deal with some of these issues. Firstly, what is Hyperion planning? 
So Hyperion planning is part of Oracle's Enterprise Performance Management Suite and it's a centralized budgeting and forecasting tool and it allows the users to access the forecasting model either through a web-based portal which is referred to as Workspace or else through Microsoft Excel. So how can Hyperion planning improve the forecasting process? Well, firstly, it's a centralized store for controlling the metadata. So all the hierarchies such as the chart of accounts, sorry, uh, all the hierarchies such as your chart of accounts and organization hierarchies are stored within Hyperion planning, meaning that A, all users are working off the same hierarchies all the time. So if, for example, a new account is added to the hierarchy, then all the users can view and work with the new account immediately. And the security can be driven by these hierarchies. So you can grant access based on specific members within the hierarchy. So you would typically restrict access to users around the organization based on your organization hierarchy. Also, it helps as it's generally a requirement to report on different views of the hierarchy throughout the organization. So Hyperion planning allows you to create alternate hierarchies to deal with such requirements. So in addition then to the metadata management, it also gives the organization greater control over its data. So the data is now stored in a centralized location and controlled through the built-in security. So you no longer have the issue of multiple versions of spreadsheets around the organization with different formulas, roll-ups, and totals. The forecasting and budgeting templates are now standardized, and users cannot update the templates on an ad hoc basis. The periods, the accounts, the entities, and other such dimensions that a user can write to are also locked down. And finally, all key drivers and assumptions are input within Hyperion planning, and all calculations are carried out using predefined business rules, which ensures that all users have visibility of the key assumptions and formulas used in, or in order to uh, build the forecast. Um, it also helps, Hyperion planning can help by with consolidating the data. So the data is consolidated based on the hierarchies that have been defined within the organization. So using the calculation engine behind Hyperion planning, uh, the consolidation is done automatically and this eliminates the error spent by the finance team consolidating the data from different regions and removing errors from Excel spreadsheets. And also, uh, we've got things like the ad hoc analysis tools, which improve the forecasting process. So the ad hoc analysis tool, which comes with Hyperion planning, is named SmartView. And it allows end users to carry out their own analysis of the model without requesting this information from the finance team. Uh, so therefore, there's a lot less requests to this team, and they no longer have to put it, like, allocate time to deal with these requests. And finally, there is a number of reporting tools which allow the organization to automate the reporting, such as their management packs, meaning there is no longer the need for the finance team to spend days pulling these together at the end of the month. Okay, so that's just some of the ways that you can Im improve your forecasting process using Hyperion planning. And as you can see, just from some of the brief things that we've gone through, there is a lot of improvements which can be made by using Hyperion planning as opposed to Excel. Then we'll just have to take a quick look now at the reporting options that are available within Hyperion planning. So with Hyperion planning comes a number of different reporting options, which means that you can cater for the needs of all users. So firstly, we can look there is SmartView, which we just briefly touched on, which is the an ad, hoc, ad hoc analysis tool. Uh, there is also financial reporting, which is used to build your predefined financial reports. And we also have web analysis, which is more so used for dashboards. Uh, and also for any organization that's using 
at OBIE, which is Oracle's Business Intelligence Suite, they can integrate the Oracle EPM suite into the OBIE suite of products. Okay, so SmartView is the first reporting tool we look at, and this is the ad hoc analysis tool, and basically it's a Microsoft Office plugin, which allows you to interact with the Hyperion planning model through Microsoft Excel. Um, so it allows the end users to carry an ad hoc analysis on the forecast model, and it allows them to drill down to the lowest level of detail in that model instantaneously. It, SmartView also has the ability to allow you to import the forecast templates defined in the planning model into Excel and also work within Excel on these templates rather than using the Hyperion planning web portal. And finally, any predefined reports that we build and tools that we discuss in the next two slides can also be imported using the SmartView tool into Excel, PowerPoint, and Word, and refreshed at any time as the data is then stored within the Office suite, but it is still live. Okay, so then there's financial reporting. So uh, financial reporting, again, comes with Hyperion planning, and the tool was really designed to meet the requirements of the finance department, and it gives the users the ability to deliver book quality reports so the tool produces highly formatted reports, so it's given the users the ability to apply functionality such as conditional formatting and customized formulas to the reports, as well as being able to report, import these reports through the SmartView tool into Excel, off, uh, Word, and PowerPoint. You can also export it directly to Excel or into a PDF format. And finally, there's the web analysis tool. So the web analysis tool is the graphical reporting tool, and it gives the users the ability to create dashboards and offers more advanced graphing functionality. So similarly to financial reporting, this tool allows users to apply such things as conditional formatting and customized formulas. And again, can also import uh, these reports into PowerPoint slides or into a Word document or into Excel. So that's just really a quick run through of the offerings that come with Hyperion Planning and how it can improve your uh, processes. And now I'll just quickly take a look at uh, Hyperion Planning itself and some of the functionality that's available within us. Okay, so on screen now, you should be able to see um, the Oracle EPM workspace, and uh, this is the home page for it. So as you can see here, we've got our recently opened, which gives us all the different planning applications that are built within here, and the ones that we have opened recently. And then you have up here a number of options along your toolbar. So uh, the first one we're going to go into is this tote plan, which is our planning model. And you can see down the side here we have a number of folders which contain different templates which are used for various planning things such as forecasting. So in here when we go to the forecast folder, you can see we have a number of forecast forms that we fill in in order to come to, to build our forecast. So if I just click here on the forecast revenue drivers one. Okay, so you can see here we've got a form and this is where we go to fill in our different, uh, our input, our forecast. So the columns that are grayed out are read only and this is because these are actuals, so it's prior months and they can no longer be written back to. And any of the cells that are highlighted in yellow are writable. So this is where we need to input our forecast. So in here we've got one account and it's the Home Theatre Audio System. And I want to update the July 2010 total and change this from 9,704 to 10,704. 
So I simply just go in here and input this total. And I hit save then on the form. And what it's going to do is it's going to run a business rule in the background, which is going to reconsolidate the whole um, the whole forecast uh, based on the changes that I've made. Okay, so here if we go, we see again, and we just type in and we change the number. Okay, so we want to update the home theater audio system from 9,704 to 10,704, and then hit save. What it's doing in the background is it's running a rule, and we can reconsolidate the data to take into account the changes that we've made to the home theater audio system account. So as you can see there, the totals have been updated to take into account this update. So there are just briefly some of the, f the forms and how they're set up in order for users to go and enter their forecasts, and that is how the whole process works. Uh, we can then look at some of the reporting options available. So if we go into this tab here, the Explore tab, you can see we have a number of folders, and in each of these folders contains each of the reports that we've built based on that forecasting model. So for financial reporting, We've, we have just opened here in a basic income statement. So this report was built using the Hyperion Financial Reporting tool. And uh, as you can see, it's just an income statement which shows our actual totals for February versus our planned totals for February. So these are predefined templates, and anyone in the organization can access these. And rather than seeing the totals for the whole organization, Based on the security applied, it will be filtered down to only show their totals. So up here then we have a number of options where we can change our view. So at the moment we're showing the February totals, but I can go in here and change this and move this from February to March and select the March totals. Okay, so then we just rerun the report. And you can see then that it automatically changes to display the March totals. Uh, another one of the reporting options is the five-year plan report that we can see here. And this is built using the web analysis tool. So you can see here we can, we've got a number of options down the side that we can select what years we keep on the report. So if I untick 2015, you can see it automatically removes 2015 from the report. I can also then drill down further, so I have net revenue and I want to see everything below it. And this is just an interactive dashboard which allows me to continually drill down. Uh, and then we also have financial reporting books. So financial reporting books are based on the financial reports that are built within Hyperion Financial Reporting. And what it does is it allows us to bring a number of reports into a book and then generate a PDF document containing each of these reports automatically. So this would be a perfect example, whereas if you had a management pack of reports, you'd bring in each report that was contained within that management pack and generate a PDF document, including a table of contents, which could then be distributed throughout your organization. And then finally, we'll just take a quick look at the SmartView tool. So SmartView is our ad hoc analysis tool, and it comes as an add-in, as you can see, within Excel. So you've got this Hyperion uh, toolbar in Excel. So this is just one we have open, and you can see here that it's, it's connected to our forecast model and just brings the data back in a standard Excel format. So from here then, we can drill in. So for the moment, I'll say I just want to keep my net income only. So I select keep only, and it brings only in the net income. And then I can say I only want to see my plan data. So I keep only my plan data. And I only want to see data for North America. 
you can see here how quickly we can drill, we can keep only the specific size of data that we want. So then once I have my net income from North America, I decide that I want to see how that's split across North America. So I can just, by double clicking, drill into North America, and immediately then it brings up the split of how it's distributed throughout North America. You can then double click on net income and see how the data is where the data is stored below net income, drill into pretax uh, income and continually drill down until we get the lowest level of the hierarchy. Okay. And uh, so that's really how Smart View works and how you can see how you can very quickly get to the lowest level of data. And anyone has access to this tool to do their ad hoc analysis. So that's really just a brief introduction to Hyperion Planning. So uh, thanks everyone for listening. And uh, if you need any further information on Hyperion Planning, please visit our website at www.codexcss.ie or please send an email to franopray at fopray at codexcss.ie. Thanks for your time. Bye.